Come in, Tower. This is call sign spare parts. Ready to fly high in my new F-35. Okay, so this aircraft is the newest fighter jet added to our arsenal. Look, I'll be honest, it's just awesome. I mean, come on, it's got horizontal and vertical takeoff. The F-35 is armed with a Gatling gun and JDAM bombs. It reaches a top speed of Mach 1.6. But the cats over at the Navy Top Gun program are faced with a real serious challenge. How do they integrate this new tool into their existing tool belt? I think I can speak for all the tools out there when I say the F-35 is very misunderstood. A lot of people think it's supposed to replace the A-10 Warthog or the F-22 Raptor. Those flying planes that are named after ground-based animals will be just fine. In this video, we'll find out the true mission for the F-35 and why I think it was worth the $1.5 trillion it cost to develop. Straight from the Navy's Top Gun program, one of the pilots there had this to say, quote, when we look at the high-end flight today, we don't necessarily have the technological advantage anymore. Tactics and TTPs are one way to get that advantage. The other is talent. Talent gap is what is going to make the difference. The pilot in the box, end quote. Air Roger, air traffic control. This is call sign spare parts. Did you know that there are three different versions of the F-35? Over. Lightning two variants are all single seat fighter jets. So you don't have to worry about Goose not ejecting in time. The F-35B and C are the versions that have the vertical takeoff ability, which make it more bulky, fatter, and less nimble in the air, thanks to the large lift fan in it. The F-35A version is the only one with the onboard Gatling gun. Usually we'll carry two air-to-air -air and two air-to-surface missiles. Speaking of which, air traffic control, this is call sign spare parts. Listen, I've got a bogey on my radar here. Tally two bandits is visual. Rooster's got an SA-6 spike at 4 o'clock, preparing to engage that funky chicken. Foxtrot 1 out. Foxtrot 2 out. Wait a second, I don't know how to fly air traffic control. Call sign Gumby, Jonathan Miller, is helping stand up the F-35 shop at Top Gun, and he said, quote, the F-35 has many capabilities, the fundamentals are the same with fifth generation flying when it comes to pilot abilities, prioritize mission sets that the F-18 cannot perform or that the F-18 needs support with. Close air support will have less emphasis since the F-18 has extensive training on it." End quote. So we need to talk about Russian air defense capabilities for just a minute. The Russians were using the old S-300 anti-air missile system. US experts are confident that version cannot detect or shoot down the F-35. They know this in part because they already inspected and analyzed the S-300, which they got a hold of thanks to their allies purchasing them. Since then, the Russian military has developed the new S-400, and we aren't sure yet if it can detect or shoot down the F-35. Everyone wants to know what kind of new insane weapons that this jet has. The jet is armed with a 25mm Gatling gun driven by an electric hydraulic system. It's got four barrels and the whole thing weighs about 230 pounds. So with a few more days at the gym, I could lift it with like no problem. The rate of fire is 3,300 rounds per minute. It's armed with two JDAM bombs, which are precision guided by global positioning systems. Each one costs about 20K a pop. It has a range of 80 kilometers. That's 10 times as far as I've gone from my couch in the past four months. It sounds like the best way to describe flying it is with an analogy. Flying the old jets is like flying a manual stick shift, while flying this aircraft is more like driving an automatic. Technology has come so far that some of the complicated and dangerous moves, like the vertical takeoff and landing, which the old Harrier used to botch sometimes, those moves have been handed over to a computer to calculate and perform. In fact, some of the fighter jet pilots even talked about their comrades worrying that the F-35 was too easy and no fun to fly. They equated flying the Harrier jet in hovering mode to riding a unicycle. I drive an automatic car, so if I had decided to become a fighter jet pilot, I definitely would have flown an F-35. You know, if I felt like becoming a pilot. Little known fact, when I first tried to join the military, I originally went to an Air Force recruiter but they turned me down because apparently you have to know how to read and write. Army infantry didn't mind though, thanks for the ASVAB waiver. The survivability is next level. 
It's able to penetrate into next generation enemy air defenses, then find those targets and destroy them. This is the mission set that all of the other generation of fighters would struggle to achieve. There are always people yelling in forums how the F-22 is better at air-to-air -air combat and how the A-10 can deliver a bigger payload to the ground, but they forget that the F-35 is designed for stealth operations. It's made for the possibility of World War III where we aren't going up against RPGs. The new jet is able to see threats from any direction way in advance in order to avoid it or destroy it. The computer sensor will even recommend what the pilot should do. The only downside is that the pilots say that there's way more you have to keep track of inside the cockpit. There are more readings and information being thrown at you, and a new part of the job is making sure you're paying attention to the right information. So if you're bad at paying attention to stuff for longer than a few minutes, and you have ADD, and you're an Italian with hairy arms from Long Island, then you're probably not what the Top Gun program wants. You'll probably never be a pilot, so you should just give up. You're well into your 30s and your chances of being accepted into the Air Force now are next to none. You're always just going to be a filthy infantry leg. Lieutenant Colonel David Burke had this to say about the F-35, quote, if you were to write down all the ways in which you could measure an airplane, payload, fuel, ordnance, handling, and ask 100 pilots to rank which is the most important, I would guarantee you that 100 out of 100 pilots would say situational awareness by far. Not a single pilot in the world would say turn radius, not one. In situational awareness, the F-35 is superior to all platforms, including the Raptor. Burke goes on to say that most of the time, the threat won't even know you're there until it's too late for them. Apparently, one of the most advanced aspects of the aircraft is the computer's ability to use sensor data to influence how it's flown. They train primarily on how to locate surface-to-air missiles and how to protect other strikers within their formation. This is the way they plan to integrate the fifth generation with fourth generation assets. Some new technologies make this level of situational awareness possible, including the $500,000 helmet that pilots of the F-35 wear. And no, it's not that expensive because it's bulletproof. This helmet is expensive because of the technology those science types down in the lab crammed into it. The helmet has the capability to make your Oculus Rift look like a piece of cardboard. So just for comparison, here's a helmet that the Army Infantry used in the 90s. It costs about $200 to produce, and the most technologically advanced that it got was when you strapped a Game Boy onto it. Using video sensors located around the fighter jet, the F-35 feeds the information into the helmet which then allows the pilot to look around and view the surroundings as if there was no aircraft around them obscuring their view. This allows the pilots to see potential enemy targets in places where traditionally they wouldn't be able to see. The F-35C Lightning II is a fifth generation fighter aircraft. Over 50 years of aircraft and carrier based fighter tactics have culminated in the creation of this jet it's based on the Harrier jet, which the British use. The Americans liked the Harrier, that it had the ability for vertical takeoff and landing. This short runway ability allows for more aircraft on the carrier. It's the first time that low observable stealth is now available from a seaborne position. The Navy, Marines, and Air Force will use the F-35 for its capabilities to overcome surface-to-air missiles and air-to-air -air missiles. The aircraft is not meant to replace the A-10 or the F-22 Raptor, which both have their mission sets. The A-10 is great for close air support when we have air superiority. The F-22 is specifically designed for dogfights against enemy fighter jets. It's one of the most maneuverable aircraft ever created. Instead, the F-35 will work alongside those existing assets. It has advanced stealth and jamming technology. It has a threat detection system that increases its survivability in the hands of a skilled pilot. At the end of the day, I believe the F-35 was worth the price tag. When I was in Iraq, jets roamed freely without second thought of ground to air attacks. They would do low flybys to scare the enemy off. They operated with complete impunity. It costs a lot to create something new and it's easy to pick it apart and joke about government waste. But without the jet, the US would likely fall behind in this second cold war. Let me know what you think of the F-35 and its mission set. I'm your host, Chris Cappy. Task and Purpose out.